I'm the CEO and founder of BrillMedia.co. Um, we're an advertising firm, and the, the main thesis for our business is to help small and mid-sized companies uh, outcompete the largest brands in the world. Uh, and what, what that really means is the outcomes that we provide are incredibly important. The primary way that I've scaled my business is by partnering with agencies or consultants or individuals who sort of package up marketing services. And we provide for them um, the best ad buying data optimization and capabilities that exist in the marketplace. So an example would that for be for of that would be like you know we have an out of home company and the company that their primary business model is about selling billboards when you're like walking down the street or you're driving on the freeway or whatever it is out out of home right so our job for them for example is to help them um, do more with location based advertising so the people who are near those billboards. We give them an opportunity to serve mobile ads to, who, to people who are near those boards. So we are our business is fundamentally about augmenting existing agencies with specifically digital media. So we are not vertical specific. Our customers are usually the agencies and we work together. We partner with the agencies to provide exceptional service capabilities and, and business outcomes for the end advertiser. Here are some, some critical points. Number one is understanding who your customer is. Like, what do, they, what do they shop for? What are their experiences? What do they need or want in the world? Um, what are their challenges? What are they trying to solve for? So under, having a customer persona is incredibly valuable. And it's hard to do, by the way. As a business owner, it's hard for a, from inside the business to craft a buyer persona. Um, it's much I think I've, I found it much easier to work with third parties when you know crafting my our own buyer persona, our own customer persona. So number one, being able to recognize who your customers are and what they want, because often business owners have an idea of why they started the business, but understanding who your customer is evolves over time, and 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 that knowledge gets enriched with every customer experience that you might have. So understanding your customer persona. The second critical thing that when we see problems with campaigns, we generally find that this is missing is a top line strategy. We don't see anyone really thinking about the holistic view of the, of the marketing efforts that are being deployed for a campaign. It's really easy to go into Facebook and Google and run ads. And what I found is, you know, as we talk to people, we, they say, we're really impressed with your growth. There's so many digital marketing companies and I'm like, I guess, I guess there are, but so many companies that do digital marketing, they do social media, they do SEO, they do content posting, they make videos, they do creative, they write email drip campaigns. Our focus is 100% on buying advertising and it's hard to be a small company who's never had the experiences that me and the other professionals like me and some of the professionals that I've, that I've assembled who have worked with these largest brands in the world it's hard for them to understand the way that these largest brands think. And further, that creates a level of what I've found to be some incredibly valuable business acumen, just understanding the mindset that our customers have with us as a service and them as the customer and holding, creating processes and service levels that help us understand or help the client understand what works. So, so it's, it's creating a buyer persona, it's having a top line strategy, not just doing tactics. You can do tactics all day, what you really need is a strategy because what the strategy provides is a framework for developing knowledge. Advertising in 2020 is about developing knowledge for a brand. It's certainly about um, creating business outcomes, but it's arguably more important to learn from every ad impression that is delivered in the marketplace. What did the customer like? What ad led them to the sale? Or what series of ads? What messaging? What price point? What imagery? What environment? All of those things are critically important. If you don't have a strategy, you're not thinking about learning about the business. You're just like, hey, I spent you know $100. Did it 
turn it into more than $100. And that's a very short-term, non-tactical, uh, uh, short-term, non-strategic, very tactical way of thinking. So we, we find when clients come up to us and they say, we want to run an advertising campaign, we really have to ask ourselves, is there anyone thinking about strategy? And our business is not designed, it's not set up to be a strategy firm. It's much more defensible to be the programmatic experts, right? So for the, for the folks who work at agencies or read the trade publications, the general characterization of our business is programmatic advertising, more jargon here, we're a trading desk, um, and we provide services that those large, the largest, com the largest ad agencies in the world provide. When you think about the functions that exist within an agency, it's strategy, it's account management, it's creative, it's the marketing technology, sort of like assembly, it's data analysis. Um, we strictly focus on programmatic advertising because that's what we know how to do and we're built for. And it took me years to really understand this because as I was growing my business, I offered smaller companies strategy outcomes and, and or like strategy work. But, you know, it's, it's much, I just find it much easier to sell media. Like, because when you pay for a strategy, you're not actually getting, this is the irony of, of, the, of the situation. Strategy is critically important. But if I deliver a strategy document to a client, then someone has to actually actively defend that strategy, actively evolve it. And I'm, we're not in a position to offer those services because what we do best is ad buying. Our business is fully designed around ad buying. And ad buying is incredibly intensive, technology um, heavy and data heavy. So we can spend lots of hours. I mean, that's all we do is ad buying. So, so everything we do is really about being the best at the one thing that we do well, and it's incredibly scalable, right? You can spend a thousand dollars a month. You can spend a hundred thousand dollars a month. You can spend a million dollars a month in ad buying to achieve business outcomes. And, um, it doesn't exponentially take that many more people to achieve those spend. It takes 10 people to run a thousand dollars. It takes 10 people to run a hundred thousand dollars and probably 20 to 30 people to run half a million dollars a month, right? As you scale up, it, it's not exponential. So it's, it's a good business model. With every level of growth, there's, it's like, there's, um, there's a level of risk. The risk remains the same, but the stakes are higher. It's a different game when I have one employee or one and a half, when I have no employees, when it's just me. I just got to make enough money to support me so I could take longer and meander and, and take risks. When I have one and when I ha there's a period when I had one and a half employees, I was like, okay, as a risk, okay, now I've got mouths to support in addition to my family. Now we have, I think we have, uh, including me, seven or eight people. I, we, we, it ebbs and flows, and plus we have um, contractors who are um, who are full time with us. So our team is about 10, 11 people, depending on the month. Now we've got exponentially higher responsibility, and the growth is about what I've learned over the years. We've been able to grow by planting the seeds, nurturing relationships, and if you do well, those those relationships continue. If you don't do well, they go away, and the lessons I've learned through that growth is about being able to recognize the growth as it's happening, hire the right people, have infrastructure in place, and once you have the right people, developing process. The last year of our business has been really focused in on the process from start to finish. What action does everyone need to take in order to in order to successfully support our our business, our clients? Because one of the challenges we had was. The entire process lived in my mind and you can't run a business when one person has the full picture and even that one person is fallible doesn't always have the full picture because other people are having conversations with clients so we really worked hard and again i mentioned tony our chief operating officer who did a great job to create a process and understand that every person you know the thing that every person on the team has to do so that um, running the business, running campaigns, it doesn't live in one person's head. You know, very candidly, we had, uh, I'll, I'll speak to something, um, I'll speak to something negative that happened. We had a, we brought on a client, someone who I met 
got into a, into a room, had a great conversation with them. And then we had no process in place, zero. There was no, um, no, no service level. Like there was nothing that is looking back and it's like obvious, like duh. Like I spent the last year building the process into my business, but with this one client, there's zero process. There's zero like leading the person down the path. And I find it, I find those situations incredibly valuable because now we have a service level and now we have a full document, a web, a web page that defines everything that happens in the first four weeks of the business. <laughs> we need that, you know, like we botched a really, you know, our first client relationship that I just, the person that I didn't know for a long time, who I just met, we botched the heck out of it because we didn't have any service level in place whatsoever. So good learning. We do all the creative, um, we build the landing page, we write an email drip campaign, we do social media posts, um, we, and, and we start. What the client, see, the way we're setting this up is what the client is paying for is actually just, they're just paying for the creative and marketing strategy for $1,500 a month. And that's ongoing for the life of the, of the business. And starting in month two, they get $500 in ad spend not in addition, we just take it out of the $1,500 because it takes about a month to set up. And they have to participate. They have to approve the creative. We, we need to understand their story. We need material to work with. We don't just divide it out of thin air. But the reality is that if the client provides us with the knowledge that we need about their business, about their story, we can do incredible things for local businesses. And I've seen it work. And these like we're getting between two and five dollar leads that are worth much more than five dollars or worth you know fifty a hundred dollars so incredible return on ad spend you know and so that i think that's a really important factor to go direct to advertiser and really make an impact because i understand what a business owner i understand a business owner they, the money is coming out of their bank account this is their dream they don't really want to do the marketing. They want to do, they want to teach dance or they want to be the dentist. They went to school for a bunch of years. They're an expert. They know how to fix teeth. I mean, the biology, like, like you don't need to be a marketing expert to be a plumber or a dentist or a lawyer or a dance studio or a hair care person. Like, like you need experts to do that for you. And it's an affordable amount that drives immediate results. Um, on the restaurant campaigns that we're doing, which are larger spends, um, we're driving 20 times return on ad spend. So for every $1 that a restaurant is spending with us, they're getting $20 back in receipts from the foot traffic that we generate from those campaigns. Incredibly valuable. I'm very passionate about this project. Everyone I work with, I somehow know and have worked with in the past and I've proven that like, I'm a reliable person. I, I know what I'm talking about. Like, I'm a good person, right? Like, like you can't, it's all about trust. If I, if anyone gets the slightest whiff that there's something distrustful happening, it pushes them away. So you have to be forward, you know, upfront and forward and just don't, don't do stupid things. Don't screw people over, right? That's number one. But it's hard to establish that when you and I just meet and like, I, I'm soliciting you for your business. So the reality is that, you know, I'm using this podcast that I have a podcast called the LA business podcast. Um, the URL is labusinesspodcast.com. And I'm using that as a way just to meet people. Cause I'm also interested in how other companies grow their business. Some people are doing really well with B2B marketing on LinkedIn. Some people are purely relationship driven, you know, and there are various other ways that people grow their businesses, which I'm also interested in. I don't know if a business like mine exists without a vast network and a big a, a tapping into relationships. Because like I, well, like I was try, starting to say, everyone we've met, I've, it's either people I've worked with or it's people who I've nurtured over like 15 months and over like social media and Twitter. And that's like, I don't know the, the, the lever to pull or push or to dial up to make that happen more quickly. Everything we've done has been opportunistic, opportunistic relationships and, and people who we've met, we've hit it off and there's things for us to work on. The big, the big mistake that we made in our business in Brill Media is that 
I took too long to hire people um, when we scaled. That hurt us in a, in a number of ways. It hurt my personal life. It hurt my mental health. It hurt, um, you know, we had some clients scale back from us because we didn't have, um, we didn't, we just, we just didn't have what we needed to have. Um, and so you're asking about rapid growth. With rapid growth comes like a slew of new decisions to make that are important that take a long time. And if you haven't done it before, you may not be prepared to activate. Like we needed to hire five people and we should have hired five people four months before we actually hired those people. And by the way, I hired the wrong people, not because they're bad, because I made wrong decisions, but I didn't know. I didn't know that, you know, what I needed as a process person. I thought I needed a media director, right? Like, so, we hired really smart and talented people, but we failed them. I failed them. So I think the big thing that I wish I would have known going into this business was having the, I guess you know, they say the intestinal fortitude, having the courage to hire when it looked like stuff was happening. But hindsight is 2020. I've learned that as we're building this new local marketing business, um, we're going to plan to hire quickly and we also have a lot more knowledge about how to how to run a, an organized process and i know you know i'm not i'm not a process guy i I'm, i've become one i've seen the importance of it but i don't need to be the process guy i can be the person that sees the the business from top line and, and helps put things into place that's a big value that i can bring to the creation of this new business along with other things but the idea is I don't ever have to, I'm not, I'm not going to be all of it. I'm not going to be a great CEO or a great chief operating officer or a great advertiser. I've just got to know how to get the right pieces in place to formulate a puzzle that's going to be a successful amalgamation of people and resources and talent to build a successful business. And if it's successful, it's because we're driving really strong, valuable business results for our clients. And by the way, not only are we driving business results for our clients, we're fighting for our clients to ensure that they know that we can drive in the business results, that they know that if they work with us, like when we sell to our clients, we're actually advocating for them. I know you need sales. I know you need leads. Like here's how you do it. And here's why you can build your dreams with us. It's not about building our business. It's about building their business.